as the coronavirus continues to spread globally, over 180 countries and territories have confirmed having at least one case of COVID-19 within their borders. As of making this video, over 17,000 people have sadly lost their lives to COVID-19 and over 400,000 have tested positive of having the virus. So what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is a kind of coronavirus. Yes guys, it's not just another way or the scientific name for saying coronavirus. It's the same way pugs are a kind of canine. So this means there's more than one type of coronavirus! Seven to be precise. And this isn't the first time we've had a coronavirus outbreak. Do you guys remember SARS and MERS? Those are kinds of coronavirus as well. That being said, so why are coronaviruses more deadly than some other viruses out there? Coronaviruses uses RNA gene sequencing instead of DNA gene sequencing, meaning they need the right host to activate and reproduce. If you didn't know this, coronaviruses are much much smaller than your cells and their RNA sequence is encased in the protein capsid with club of pike-like projections on them. These club-like projections are what give the corona its name. So the spikes are the corona in coronavirus. As you all know, corona transfers from people to people, but they also transfer from animal to people. This makes them zoonotic, just like the bird flu. As a result, this makes them harder to completely eradicate as there's always a chance or possible chance of reinfection from an animal. All coronaviruses attack your respiratory organs. And as for COVID-19, those mainly target your upper respiratory tract. These are your nose, your windpipes, and your lungs. Mainly your lungs. Probably know this by now, but COVID-19 spreads through contact. Not just being in the same room with the person, but actual coming into direct contact with the virus itself. Either from the person sneezing on you, coughing on you, or on a surface you come into contact with. Although it's smart to just generally avoid infected people because you never know where they may have spread the virus to by now or what it may have come in contact with. The most common way of getting infected is through your eyes, nose or mouth. Then the virus makes its way down your respiratory tract towards your lungs. Once it comes into contact with your respiratory cells, this is where the virus spikes come into play. They bind to receptors on the cells. Think of these spike-like projections as keys and each cell having its own unique lock. So these projections can only open the cells with the right locks. In this case, the coronavirus can only unlock respiratory cells. Currently, the mortality rate is between 3 to 5%, which is very high considering the number of people who are infected by this virus. 81% of people who are infected show only signs of mild infection, which is only like flu-like symptoms, while 14% are rated as severe and require hospitalization, and the remaining 5% require intensive care. The people most at risk, keyword most, are those people over 50 years old or with pre-existing medical conditions. So this means people with healthy lifestyle and more importantly healthy immune system should be able to get rid of the virus themselves within weeks. So guys, there isn't a better time to get healthy. Eating healthy, getting more sleep, exercising, and definitely the best time, I mean the best time to quit smoking. That includes jewels, e-cigarettes, regular cigarettes, cigars, and dare I say it, a green. Give your lungs a fighting chance. As it stands, 35% of people who have been infected have fully recovered and the number continues to rise. While the recovery rate continues to fluctuate, peaking at 55% at 8 of March 2020, right now it currently sits at 34%. So what are the symptoms for COVID-19? Before we dive in on that, let's talk about how these symptoms come about. When COVID-19 enters into a person's body and starts to wreak havoc, the body senses this and triggers an immune response to fight it. Both the effect of the virus and your immune system will cause this range of symptoms. Now this is where it gets tricky because some of the symptoms are quite common and most times tend to go unchecked. Before COVID-19, no one ever thought twice when you sneezed or someone coughed. Now, if you hear someone cough, you're like, back up, back up, get out. 
So the reason you get symptoms like high temperature is to help your immune system function better and to also make your body an unconducive environment for the virus. Symptoms like runny nose make it harder for the virus to get into your lungs as they get stuck on the mucus on the way down. Fatigue, this is your body prioritizing fighting the virus over putting energy into a regular day-to-day -day activities. Sore joints are due to the increase of production of white blood cells because if you didn't know, white cell production is in the marrow of the bone. Speaking of sore joints, in some cases your immune system responds late or the virus reproduces a lot more quickly than usual. So in an attempt to save your body, your immune system goes into overdrive and produces a massive amount of white blood cells in order to get a handle on it. And white blood cells are responsible for activating a number of chemicals in the body which can cause leaking of fluids into the lungs. So if you combine fluid in the lungs plus the virus wreaking havoc on your lungs and your body pushing its limits on the level of oxygen has been sent to the bloodstream, you're in a very very dangerous situation. Now, put all of that on an already compromised lung due to smoking, you're looking at a fatally low level of oxygen in your bloodstream. And that will lead to organ failure starting from your brain that requires the majority of the oxygen you take in. Did you know the virus may not be what kills the person? Other bacteria can take advantage of the weakened, distracted or compromised immune system and choose to attack. And that will cause further complications, causing the body to shut down one organ at a time. Can we stop the outbreak? No. Sadly, we cannot stop the outbreak of quarantine and travel restrictions, but those will help slow it down and help flatten the curve. It's been reported that someone who was infected went as long as 24 days with no signs or symptoms. So if there are more of these people out there, even after two weeks of quarantine and isolation, they will still be out there and still be infected and still show no signs of infection and no one will be the wiser. Then you also have people who are afraid of the government or the healthcare system. Conspiracy! Or don't want to be separated from their family or are stubborn and think they got this. It's not a big deal. As a result, keep the virus circulating much longer than it should be. On the bright side, the virus seems to be under control and getting better. Wuhan just released its last patient from its last open temporary hospital. So Wuhan has officially closed its last temporary hospital and have reported no new cases. So how do you protect yourself? Wash your hands with soap and warm water. The hotter the water, the better. Sanitize your phone or it beats the point of washing your hands in the first place if you're just gonna pick up your germ riddled phone right after you wash your hands. We know you take your phone into the toilet with you. Mm hmm. It's probably just the time to stop using your phone in public unless it's absolutely necessary. Don't touch your face. That includes touching up your makeup, wiping the eye crust off your eyes, picking your nose. Yes, I see you digging for gold. Biting your nails. Ew, that's just nasty. Wear a face mask. Practice social distancing where possible. If you think you have the symptoms, stay at home, isolate yourself, call your doctor, or just call 911 or 999 or 112 or whatever your emergency postcode number is. Now let's talk about wall stats. The thing I hate the most about this noisy pestilence, yes, COVID-19 is a noisy pestilence, is that it's not the worst thing out there, as you can see from this graph. This graph is outdated, so it's probably more like here now, but still. Still not close to anywhere near the worst things. We all know about the OGs like malaria, HIV, tuberculosis. Those guys are world class killers. I should point out, these numbers have gotten from the number of deaths a year divided by the number of days in a year. And the scary thing is that these other diseases don't stop. Like they're not on holiday, they're not taking a break, they're not resting. Like people are still dying every day from all these diseases. The greatest killer of them all, the kingpin, the one, the only, drumroll please, hunger, which kills about 25,000 people a day. Yes, you heard me correctly, 25,000 people. Yes, yes, I know it's not a disease, but I mean, those numbers speak for itself. Unfortunately, it's not something that anyone who can afford a TV, a radio, or something they can listen to the news on is affected by. So the news don't bother to carry it. And about three in every four deaths are kids under the age of five. Be safe out there, protect yourself, and you don't need 100 toilet papers just so you can waste some of it on an internet challenge. Thank you and God bless.